There is no turning back from these low rates. The die has been cast. Every asset is valued in terms of cheap money. Nearly one-fifth of U.S. corporations traded on the open market are zombies with massive debt and zero profit. Negative interest rates is coming on large deposits. Your checking, bank savings account will continue to make you a nickel a year. But the cost of negative interest rates will be passed along to the consumer for products like insurance. Zero interest rates killed the economy dead. It can never be fixed, the Rubicon has been crossed. The best hope now is for a managed decline without a lot of bloodshed. Since 1913 the dollar has lost 98% of its purchasing power. The current US dollar is worth 3 cents of a 1913 US dollar. The US dollar isn't strong. It is just that every other currency it's being compared to is worthless. And as John Rubino says, there is no real bottom for the dollar, euro or the yen. Their intrinsic value is zero. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Currencies are trading in a false paradigm. It is the coordinated collusion of the major central banks that have allowed this charade to exist. It is essential to understand that wealth is contained within a rather closed system. System of fiat money by laws and rules that discourage freedom of movement into tangible assets. This has sheltered currencies from a storm of volatility. The failure or significant repricing of any of the world's four major reserve currencies will destroy the myth that major currencies are immune to the same fate that has haunted so many currencies throughout history. Simply put, when the nations are granting them have proven unable to control their budgets, their currency is crushed under the weight of debt. All fiat currencies are theft, it's just that it isn't realized by most till it's worthless. You can't fool everyone all of the time, nope. But nobody is in a position to tell us how something more satisfactory could be put in place of the gold standard. Money is superior to counterfeit. Investment is superior to theft. Ethics is superior to praxeology. Analytics is superior to sophistry. Over 100 years of renaming counterfeit as a kind of money, theft as a kind of investment, ruminating over behavior that has been and not which ought to be, and attaching argumentation to false suppositions rather than definitions, the instituted has never positioned well. Everyone can tell you what standard is better than gold. Simply ask, if theft and robbery are bad behavior, then how can stealing by law be for the common good? As long as the global reserve currency is dollar peg on air, it is guaranteed that the purchasing power of all currencies, including the US dollar, will continue to devalue since the gold standard was pulled. You need $635 to match the value of a 1971 $100 bill. A foreign leader understands the disadvantage of the system against its economy. The dollar has been designed to control everyone's currency and not a very simple system to undo. However, its greed won't last forever. The dollar is only worth 15.7% what it was worth in 1971. Your money has lost nearly 85% of its value in less than 50 years. But hey, that is what you get when you let your government print as many, toilet paper sheets, dollar bills, as they want to year after year after year. Nixon made this printing madness possible when he unlinked gold and the dollar. The Fed will print US dollars from thin air to buy treasuries, in unlimited quantities at no cost to satisfy global liquidity demands, and you will accept dollars for your goods, your services, and your labor. This system was in effect long before this POTUS ever showed up. Without real, free market capitalism, we are doomed. Government interference in the economy, predatory capitalism, false economics in education, corporatism, fascism, cronyism, campaign contributions, lobbying, etc. has destroyed the real capitalism and put the final nail in America's coffin. The spread of socialism is just a symptom of America's death spiral. Gerald Salente says, capitalism ended with bailouts. In other words, they should have done bankruptcy where the strong banks survive and get the asset of the banks that did not happen because of mistakes and foolishness. That would be in line with capitalism. It also would be in line with being, uncorrupt, for lack of a better word. What happened is they screwed us to save themselves for a little while, too big to fail ended capitalism. All they did was knit baby the rich with easy money and 0%, now very low, rates. 
if they keep the money supply flowing to where the everyday American, Joe Sixpack can make his monthly payments, as well as Big Jim Investor, can do the same, they can keep this going for many years. They just need to avoid any bottleneck in the system. The line on the chart just keeps going up and up. Instead of a person making $15 per hour, it will be $150, then $400, then $1,000 per hour. If the ratio of earning to expenditures stays the same, it can continue far longer than one would think possible, computers and algorithms running the show. Bottom line, we all have a critical decision to make right now. We can see from the Fed's recent repo actions there is a clearly visible hyper-inflationary fork in the road before us. What path we choose now will determine our financial life or death. If one chooses the rising stock market path, Eventually, the fiat paper dollars you get for your manipulated rising stocks will be zero. As the Fed is currently doing short-term and long-term repos and is doing to our currency, what Zimbabwe did to theirs. If you choose the gold path, you can buy physical gold now, at its a current low manipulated price, like the banksters, Russia, China, India, Germany, are doing, and simply hold it until the inevitable dollar collapse as the dollar slips toward worthlessness, from the 100 cents it was worth in 1913 to 1 cent, then to 1 tenth of a cent, then to 1 one hundredth of a cent. Whereas physical gold, as history tells us, will keep its worth. All fiat currencies eventually lose their value, even if they happen to survive 175 years. Or 375 years like the pound sterling. And remember buying gold stocks is not taking the gold path, as in the end, your hyperinflated gold stocks will be paid to you by your broker in, essentially worthless, hyperinflated, fake, fiat money. Only, physical gold, will retain value as, real money, even when governments fall and centuries pass. From 30 BC to today. No one can predict the timing of when the debt bubble will burst, but it should be clear by now, that the repo program is just another firewall the Fed is using to keep the system from collapsing. The philosophy of stealing wealth from the future to have a better now is not working. There has been no recovery. I repeat. There has been no recovery. The markets are rigged to hide the truth and prolong the sham. Period. At this point, if people can't see what's coming, we can't help them. Just like Noah in the Bible, we, in the face of denial and criticism, have given warning after warning and told people to prepare. The responsibility now rests on them. Once again we're spending tens of billions of dollars a month to bail out the bankers, spending even more than we spend in a month on our entire military, because the markets demand it. Meanwhile there are literally millions of people in this country living on the streets or in their cars. The current form of capitalism is not working well for the general public. If we do not find a more equitable form of capitalism and implement it soon, aka, New Deal, or, Nordic model, or whatever, we are going to end up with socialism, communism, as sure as the sun rises. The Fed has stated that it intends to run its repo program until the end of the year. What started out in September as a temporary program has now become permanent. I am beginning to lose track of the number of repos the Fed has released since September. I guess it really doesn't matter at this point since the whole system is going off the cliff anyway. It's QE and now repos to infinity and beyond. The initial bailouts back in 2008-09, QE1, was a mistake. While it avoided bankruptcies for the, too big to fail, banks, they should have been allowed to fail. No entity should be considered too big to fail, that alone is a warning sign of corruption. QE is only a band-aid on a series of gushing arterial wounds caused by multiple open fractures. The band-aids haven't worked, so your patient is in shock and now going to bleed out regardless of how much additional paper you attempt to stuff into the wounds. With all these think tanks that the government employs and all this worldwide coordination with governments to follow the US over the abyss of bankruptcy. By keeping people confused, broke, and distracted, this allows the coordinated system failure while protecting politicians and bankers through the computer communication and power disruptions that would interfere with group gathering which our government's officials have already organized by corrupted buying of key people and organizations. Already some judges have ignored the laws and generated their own by decisions against this organization we call government. Demand that the decision makers in government allow the banks, businesses, money managers, currency manipulators, etc. that fail, to go bankrupt simply. No one and no business is too big to fail. 
Individuals and families need support in the financial crisis, but businesses that fail should restructure through bankruptcy and then disappear or rise again if their purpose is worth salvage. Bailing out Wall Street and the banks, even foreign banks, is precisely what the Fed has been doing since 1913. And they lie to Congress about their actions, like repo, and deny any freedom of information requests. The actions of the elite through their central bank system for the last 30 plus years proves they have been planning and preparing the monetary system as a whole for a collapse. Rome did not fall in one day, one month or even one year. Instead, it declined for 300 years and then eventually collapsed. America is in a similar glide path in all respects but actually proceeding at an accelerated rate compared to the Roman Empire. We won't last 175 more years, and neither will the US dollar, at current relative values. We're approaching a major turning point in economic history when the world unplugs from the dollar. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.